hello, good morning, good afternoon, whatever time it is that you're joining us here for another episode of The Nonprofit Show. And if you've joined us earlier this week, you realize this is Nonprofit Power Week, thanks to your part-time controller. Today we have with us Daniel Trich, CPA at your part-time controller. Hi, Dan. Dan's here to talk to us about three needs for your virtual accounting. And this is really important now as we move and evolve back to that pivot and evolution into our workspace in the nonprofit community. We wanna remind you who's here, uh, Julia Patrick, enjoying a much needed day off, CEO of the American Nonprofit Academy. I'm Jarrett Ransom, your nonprofit nerd, CEO of the Raven Group, honored to serve alongside Julia to provide these conversations and episodes for you, our viewers and our listeners. We could not do it, and especially this Nonprofit Power Week without our amazing presenting sponsors. So I'm going to give a quick verbal shout out. Thank you so very much to Bloomerang, American Part-Time, sorry, American Nonprofit Academy, your part-time controller, which is also today's um, episode for Nonprofit Power Week. We have Be Generous. We have Fundraising Academy at National University, Staffing Boutique and Nonprofit Thought Leader, as well as the Nonprofit Nerd. And it is special, so I want to give another call out to your part-time controller because this entire week is dedicated to that. So again, if you missed any of this week's episodes or any of our previous 600 plus 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 episodes, you know where to find us. You can uh, queue us up on Roku, YouTube, Amazon Fire TV. Vimeo, as well as podcasts. So if you're a podcast listener like I am, and I'm curious, Dan, are you a podcast listener? I am occasionally, but mostly when I'm driving. But since I do so much virtual accounting, I'm not driving as much anymore. So I need to get back into them. That's a great plug. I love that. So yeah, cue us up wherever you stream your your entertainment for that. Um, So yes, really excited to have you back, Dan. Dan Trich, CPA manager also at your part-time controller. Welcome, Dan. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. Yeah, I'm excited to have you on. You know, our relationship with you goes back several years. And uh, so we've we've been working in this sector for quite some time. But go ahead and tell us a little bit about you, what you do, Dan, and as well as your part-time controller for our viewers and listeners that might be tuning in for the first time. Sure. So I'm actually the market leader for our remote or virtual Uh, West Coast office now. So I'm in charge of running our team in California, Nevada, Oregon, uh, Washington, Alaska, and Hawaii. Um, And what YPTC does when I indicate that I have a team, right? Our our team is responsible for anything um, accounting related at our nonprofit clients. So soup to nuts accounting from bookkeeping all the way to CFO level analysis. We can pretty much do it all. We do like to focus a lot on financial reporting and making those reports digestible to both management and the board. And the data visualization. I love mm-hmm. that piece. We had um, someone from your team on to talk about how you encapsulate those reports to share them with the board in that visual element. And I just, I really nerded out on that. So I have to, I have to, you know, <laughs> go all out there. Well, again, you're going to talk to us today about three needs that we need in our nonprofit um, organization for the virtual accounting. So let's dive into this and let's kick it off. I want you to talk to us about how we might invest in that flexibility and the cloud-based system. Where do we start for this? For sure. And first, I want to just address the acronym FTF. I thought it was a little clever because we think of it as face-to-face, right? But we're talking about virtual accounting here. So I created an acronym F2F that relates to virtual accounting, and we'll go through each of them. Um, So the first F is investing in a flexible cloud-based accounting system. So I think that's really, really important because as we go through, as we gain more clients and we talk to our clients, we realize that a lot of organizations have invested in systems that don't talk to each other and that aren't cloud-based. And in a time, especially around COVID, right, where everyone needed to access the accounting systems from home or from wherever they were, right, it became all of a sudden very important to have easy access to the accounting system. So a cloud-based accounting system will allow you to do that, whether you need to hire on a consultant or maybe you're away from your house or God forbid there's a national natural disaster. If you're down south, sometimes those happen, right? And you have to go away from home and you need to access your files. A cloud-based accounting system is extremely helpful in implementing virtual accounting in your organization. I also mentioned 
um, cloud-based accounting system because they also tend to be the ones that talk to your other applications, your donor databases, your banks, things like that. And it eliminates duplication of effort um, with those systems. I really appreciate you mentioning this. And, you know, when I think of cloud-based system, I know that, you know, cybersecurity comes in play and there's there's a lot of those, you know, responsibilities and um just everything we have to pay attention to. So having these cloud-based systems and having them talk to one another is really important. So where do we start with even knowing what system would be the right one for us to integrate the other systems that you mentioned we might also be using? That's a good question. And honestly, what I do uh, most of the time when we have clients who um, come on and have a, you know, we are what we call software agnostic. So if they have a cloud-based accounting system, the first thing I'll do is Google and say, whatever that is, like financial edge integrations. And I can look at the integrations list and see whether their other systems integrate with that system. So honestly, it's as easy as a Google search nowadays, because most people, when they're shopping for accounting systems, are now looking for those types of integrations. You know, I do the same thing. So not accounting, but fundraising. I look up, you know, that donor database to say, okay, Bloomerang, what do you, you know, what do you integrate with? So I know, uh, you know, who plays nicely with one another to create those efficiencies. So that is, uh, you know, a big piece of that flexibility is having that cloud-based system for your employees to use. Um, and you're right, Dan, you had said this earlier, a lot of employees are coming, you know, to the job with that expectation to be able to work from home. So investing in the system is, is a critical piece. Now you're going to talk to us about training our staff on how to work with these virtual accounting tools. Where do we start with that? Sure. So um, a lot of, especially the more expensive accounting systems or general ledger systems that you purchase, most of them will come with some training hours. However, if you're going to go for a cheaper accounting system like a QuickBooks Online, um, there's all sorts of training out there. However, it won't be good enough to tell your staff to go out and on their own time, watch some YouTube videos, right? your training needs to be very intentional. People will not use what they do not understand. So you need to make sure that you're giving them intentional training on these new tools, these new virtual accounting tools, because it can be very difficult to both do your job and then also on the side, learn something new. So making sure again, that you're intentional when you're onboarding your staff to these new tools is really critical for the um, integration to be a success. I can only imagine there's so many tools out there. So, you know, when someone applies for a job and they say, well, I haven't used this tool, but I've used a similar tool. Like, are there just a plethora of accounting systems and tools out there that staff know and, and also need to learn? Yeah, I mean, I think um, most seasoned accountants have used several different systems. And in general, the, the theme of the system is the same, right? Um, you know, you want to be able to produce financial states, statements or other relevant reports out of them. Um, you need the ability to uh, post journal entries. You need the ability to track your bank account activity and reconcile, things like that. So whatever the systems are, almost all of them do that in some way, shape or form, right? So we all know, at least as accountants, what they're supposed to do. And then it's just learning how this particular system handles that. So again, though, that can be difficult for some systems, and I won't name any in particular here, but um, it can be harder for some of the others. Um, QuickBooks Online is one that's pretty easy to use for the most part, but then again, it doesn't have the power of some of the more difficult to use systems. So researching which system is best for your organization is pretty critical in terms of getting that right level of ability, um, especially reporting ability out of that system, and then training your employees on it. You don't want to go for the $10,000 system if you don't need that, because you're going to have to invest in a lot of training um, so that your employees can even figure out how to use it. <laughs> That was my next question, Dan. Is there like a certain sweet spot once your organization hits, you know, a certain number of full-time employees or a certain amount of operating budget that we're saying, okay, now we've, you know, we've graduated from this system, we've matured to this next system. Are there levels for these cloud-based systems that we need to consider? 
There are, but it really, it's not based on, you know, employee or revenue number. It can be based on any number of things. Um, you know, the complexity of the organization is a big one. How you need to report on certain grants or, um, or to funders. You know, you really have to look at um, what are the needs of your specific organization. For the most part, you know, the organizations we work with, um, which are typically between 1 million and 15 million in revenue, um, QuickBooks Online does a good enough job and it's very cost effective, right? Um, however, for some that are in that range, it's not powerful enough to do the reporting that they need. So it just depends and you have to really look at what are your management and board's needs in terms of reporting and what are your funders needs. Yeah. I wanna go back to the statement you made is that YPTC is truly software agnostic. So working with YPTC, you're saying regardless of the system, you're on board, you can help. That's something that, that you and your team can assist with. Talk to us about that because I can, can only imagine you've seen the gamut of you know organizations that are smaller because I know I have and it's like, well, we don't have a database. We have, we have some things kind of cobbled together. Have you worked with those cobbled systems? Yes, we've worked with pretty much I shouldn't say every system under the sun, but many, many of them. And ones that even after spending a decade in accounting, I'd never even heard of, right? Um, really? And yeah, and I think the key to being able to do that is we really focus on finding people who love technology and who believe that technology is a critical part of their role um, and learning technology is a critical part of their role. So if you are considering um, taking your organization into a virtual accounting realm, make sure you're talking to your staff and gauging their comfortable, their comfortable, how comfortable they are with new technology because it's gonna be a slog if they don't enjoy learning new things. Um, that's, something, that's something that can be very difficult if you're saying, hey, we're gonna switch accounting systems and they're just dreading it, right? Whereas for someone like me, I see something new out there and I'm just like so excited to go out and learn how this is so much different than what I've been doing before and how it can help me do my job better. Yeah, and I heard you say, we know what we need to do. It's just learning a new system and how those buttons and functions perhaps work differently in the system. Yep, so. yeah, it's the same concept. It's just everything does it just a little bit differently. Um, and some things are, you know, some systems are a little faster. Some are just um, a little bit more onerous, but they're more powerful, right? So they're onerous for a reason. It's just finding that right fit for your staff and your organization. Yeah. Well, I can only imagine, you know, training staff to work with the virtual accounting tools that has to advance more and more and more, because as our workforce continues to advance into this virtual space or work from anywhere, uh, this is a really big component in, in the workspace of the community. Now, again, today's you know show, we're talking about the three needs for your virtual accounting and Dan has put together the FTF. And so we're on the final F here, which you're gonna share with us how we find a reliable technology firm or information technology IT firm to support the technology that we're using. Let's go into this because I'm really curious, just, just like the systems, there's a lot of IT firms out there. So how do we find the right one that works for us? You definitely want one that's a partner with you and can be forward looking in terms of your IT security and your IT support. Because if you're going from being mostly in-house on a server, you know, and now you're going to do it virtual accounting with people working from home, you're going to need someone to advise you on how on how best to set that up and how best to maintain security for your organization. That is not something we do, but it's something that we know is critically important for nonprofits out there is to make sure that they have that partner who's aware of the most current threats that are out there. If you are taking all of your systems online, you could in theory be more exposed um, to online threats. However, with a really good IT accounting firm, you should be fairly safe. So that's why it's one of the three things I talk about with, um, with uh, virtual accounting. It's because it is just that important. It's really important. And again, this week is Nonprofit Power Week. Thanks with uh, your part-time controller or YPTC, like we all like to call it. Jennifer Oliva came on on Tuesday. And so if you are worried about some of your virtual technologies or some of the frightening financial fails, I think was the title of that show. Um, Jennifer really did dive deeper into, you know, making sure that your cybersecurity was in place for internal threats, external threats. Um, but I'm glad you mentioned that because Dan, I'm curious, how long have you been in this virtual accounting space? Because is this 
newer for you? Is it even newer for the industry? Um, I'm going on year four now of really just doing um, doing a lot of virtual accounting work, honestly. Um, so it's, I guess you could say, still newer for me, but that's about a third of my career um, that I've now been kind of interested in working in this space. Um, so definitely something that I've become much more adept at. And now I run an entirely remote market. So now this is my everyday. And is YPTC fully virtual? Is that as well? Because I know they work virtually with clients. Yeah, they can be. Um, we can be uh, fully virtual. Prior to the pandemic, we had um, several um, physical locations and we're still going to have physical office locations going forward. But we all, every single one of our 500 employees has the ability to work virtually now. So, yeah. That is amazing. And I can only imagine the advancements of technology and, and how this, you know, plays into that. What else can you share when it comes to that, you know, reliability on the IT firms? What we sh- what should we be looking for? Sure. Um, responsiveness, because if someone gets locked out of their account or they are afraid maybe they have a virus on their company provided computer, you need an organization, um, an IT firm that's responsive. Here's the other thing I always plug. And if there's, I think there's a couple of people from my company watching this now and they'll probably roll their eyes because I always plug it, but it's true. Um, An IT firm that is willing to look forward and try and prepare your organization for the, for the threats that are coming like spear phishing or becoming more prevalent, like spear phishing, Um, making sure that that company is, for example, sending your employees fake phishing emails to test to see whether they're asking that all critical question, am I expecting this? Am I expecting this email? Am I expecting this phone call? IT companies should partner with you to teach your employees to ask that question every time they get something they're not expecting. If they're not expecting, delete it. Um, Do not open it. Um, And that is one of the biggest things you can do to make your organization safe as you move to virtual accounting is to teach your employees how to spot these threats and an IT firm should be a partner with you in doing them. That's really good to know. I I feel that what I've seen in my uh, professional career, Dan, is IT tends to go to the staff member that knows how to plug in the right wires into the right (laughs) holes. And it's like, I don't think that's quite the reliability of an IT that YPTC is looking for. No, you definitely need a partner um, as you're moving into the virtual space to be able to troubleshoot just very simple things with a computer, um, maybe for your not so tech savvy people, but then also be very aware of how the space is changing and be able to safeguard your information. Yeah. Um, I'm curious, we have, we still have some more time with us, uh, Dan, to talk about the FTF. And again, remind everyone this acronym because it's not face-to-face. No, it's invest in a flexible account, cloud-based accounting system, train your employees on your virtual accounting tools, and then find a reliable IT firm to support your staff during and after your tech transitions. Wow. Well, I'm really curious when it comes to the IT and I'm kind of going back to that virtual training, you know, and so training the staff on the accounting tools. I'm really curious because you mentioned something that really piqued my interest. You know, we can't just rely on them to watch a, a video tutorial. So are we setting aside time for the staff to train into this? And then, yeah, talk to us more about that. What does that look like? Yeah, I mean, setting aside time is is critical. I mean, I come from, um, I was a teacher for two years. I don't know if I've ever mentioned that to you, Jared. I'm sure I have. I mentioned it to most I people. I don't but think I knew that. Yeah. One thing, one thing I learned while teaching was just how intentional you have to be about um, learning new things. Um, and just saying the expectation is that your staff that might already be working 40 or 50 hours a week, maybe even more, it's their job on their own time to learn a system. Um, it's not going to work. Whether you think... It should or shouldn't. Um, It won't. I can just guarantee it. They're not going to do it on their own time at eight o'clock at night after their kids have gone to bed. They're not going to watch YouTube videos. So make sure that you're being very intentional about it. Again, if you buy the more expensive systems, they will let you know about what that integration looks like. And they will give you training hours and kind of schedule those things with you. If you're getting the um, kind of the easier to use systems like a QuickBooks Online or a Xero or something like that, there are lots of YouTube videos online, but there are also courses you can buy online. And I would encourage you to look through your options and schedule time for your staff to learn the new system. But aren't there 
also like advancements in these, like, like even with our, with our phones, right? It's like, Hey, we have a new technology download. Like, is that also happening in these virtual, uh, you know, the cloud-based systems for account accounting that there's new uh, downloads or new, you know, systems that are integrated in? Yeah, one nice thing about most cloud-based systems is that they update automatically. They don't have to download, they just do it. And they'll usually inform you if it's a major update, but for the most part, the updates are focused on stability and keeping them online. Um, so you'll see if you actually have desktop-based accounting software and that particular company is starting to move to the cloud, you will start to see your desktop-based software get updated less and less because they're moving everything as best they can to the cloud. That's the sort of thing you don't have to worry about when you're in the cloud is that those are being updated and monitored constantly, whereas you would get occasional patches on your desktop version. Okay, well, that, that's really good to know. And I'm curious, you know, I'm sure there's a lot of viewers, a lot of listeners listening to this nonprofit uh, Power Week with your part-time controller. But as we talk about, you know, the virtual accounting with you, Dan, I'm curious if a nonprofit is interested in allowing either their current staff to work virtually or to bring on a new staff member, and as we mentioned, there's a lot of staff right now that in the negotiation period of a new hire and even some existing staff, they're renegotiating to say, hey, I really enjoyed working for from home. Like, how should we even integrate this work from home or this, you know, FTF, as you mentioned it, for staff members? Do you have any best practices? Again, I think um, anytime you're making a big change, getting staff buy-in is a huge part of it. But as you already mentioned, people are demanding this anyway. And for our clients that can't hire, my first question is, are you allowing flexibility to work from home? If they're not hiring, if they're having trouble hiring right now and they say no to that, that's my first recommendation is, hey, you need to start being more flexible on that because um, it's going to be very difficult to hire out there. And if it isn't difficult enough already, it's going to get even worse because younger um, younger people are expecting to be able to have that flexibility. They know now, especially the really young ones, they've gone to school virtually for a year, right? right. They know that if it's required, it can happen, right? That I, I've heard someone say that the biggest lie our employers always told us was that you can't do your work from home. Well, COVID showed that that really wasn't the case. The will just needed to be there. Well, I think when you're hiring people, you need to show that the will is there to be flexible. Um, and if your people are demanding it, then it sounds like there's no one more valuable in your organization than the people you have, right? So you need to listen to them and whatever it takes to integrate is probably what you're gonna have to do. Um, that being said, again, it's not like cloud accounting is new. It's been around for years now. So there are very easy ways to integrate these things as long as you're not switching from um, one system that's very different to another. Um, and even if you're doing that, um, if you have the funds, it, they can do that transition for you. It can be onerous, but again, it's gotten a lot easier over the years to do this. So it doesn't have to be um, this monumental task to get it done. Um, it's it's possible to do it, it, plan it out so that it's not too onerous on anyone. You know, I'm so glad that you mentioned that because it is the way of the world. And I've seen it so much, you know, with so many different age groups, not just the younger group, but also, you know, older season, more employees that are saying, hey, I really enjoyed not sitting in traffic, not having to, you know, deal with that commute. Um, but, you know, really looking at this, that cloud-based system is so important. But I still feel, Dan, there's people that say, we have to have accounting, like, on our campus, in our team. There has to be, like, a vault, something locked up. But I love that YPTC is demonstrating the best practice on, you know, how to secure your virtual systems in this accounting. And as you mentioned, it's not new. No, it's not new. And, and I would argue too that like even a brick and mortar location with locked file cabinets is far less safe than um, having a login where you're storing all of your um, payment information that has dual factor authentication and constantly changing passwords, right? Um, that I think that is pretty safe. Um, and you want to make sure that again, you're talking with your IT firm to make sure that those um, authentications and logins, uh, logins are safe given the latest threats. Um, but there's lots of great tech tools out there for virtual accounting that are actually improving internal controls. Um, so something to consider as well is that these new tools not only allow your people to work from home or work from wherever they are, but they're actually an improvement in internal controls for your organization. 
Well, it makes me think about, you know, we're also every single day, every single entry, we're working towards that financial audit in some way, shape or form. So making sure that we've dotted our I's, we've crossed our T's so that when that auditor comes in for the financial audit or our financial reviews, we have these best practices in place. And remind me, does YPTC do financial reviews and or audits? No, we do no test engagements. So we don't do audits. We don't do reviews. We don't do compilations, anything like that. We also don't do um, Form 990s or any tax work, but we will facil facilitate all of those processes. Yeah. So and be the liaison. Care for them, which I love that preparation and make sure that, like I said, <laughs> Those I's are dotted and those T's are crossed. So, well, all of this has been fa fantastic. And again, the FTF, you know, the final one is finding that reliable IT firm to support your technology. You gave us some great insight there, Dan, and I'm really glad that you did. Um, if you have joined us this week, you've noticed that it is Power Week, as we like to call it. It's kind of our spin on Shark Week, but Nonprofit Power Week with the uh, with your part-time controller here at the Nonprofit Show. Hey, YPTC has so many amazing resources. Um, many of them, if not most, are free. So please do make sure that you're getting the latest, and I want to say greatest, news and accounting information from YPTC. Uh, those of you listening, their uh, web address is YPTC.com. And this news section, for those of you watching, you can see there's some really great information on their website. Um, there's a lot of great webinars and resources and tools. Again, I mentioned earlier about a data visualization. Um, episode that we had on with an amazing member from YPTC. So there's so much great information that you, you Dan, are putting out and your colleagues are putting out. Um, is there anything else coming up that we might want to know about or kind of mark our calendars? Um, I'm sure there is, but I'm drawing a blank at the moment. So I'm sure we'll yeah. be able to plug it later. <laughs> well, absolutely. And then I think if my memory's uh, recalling for me properly, is there a podcast now for YPTC? There is, yes. Yeah. And you can get access it straight from that site as well. So there is a podcast now. I think that'd be great for those of you who are still having to commute or if you like to listen to podcasts in your office. You know, I like to podcast when I'm walking. That's my big thing. When I'm walking yeah. the dog or getting ready or taking a lunch break. So do check out um, your part-time controllers podcast. It is fantastic. It's queued up in my section as well. And I just really love it. You know, I am not a financial nerd. And so I'm a nonprofit nerd, but not, a, I'm not you know, attuned to this financial side. So I always consume my information thanks to YPTC that makes it so readily accessible. And thanks to Dan again for being here, uh, Daniel Trich, CPA manager with your part-time controller. Uh, we've had such a great opportunity to meet with you in person a couple of times, Dan, and that's just been fantastic. But again, Julie and I are always super impressed by the entire team at your part-time controller. So check them out. If you're curious about anything that Dan has mentioned today in the episode, you can uh, find more information at yptc.com. Dan's also on LinkedIn. I always like to give that shout out for, for our guests. So find them on LinkedIn. They're always here to help just as we are. So again, Julia, Patrick, and myself, Jarrett Rance, I'm excited to be here for Nonprofit Power Week. We don't do these weeks often, so it really is a special time that we do that. This entire week has been fantastic. We just talked a little bit about yesterday's. So if you missed it, you can, you can surely find it. But again, thank you to our presenting sponsors that keep the nonprofit show going and growing. Allow these Power Weeks, that's a deep dive into, for this week, accounting and system to work for your nonprofit. So a shout out of gratitude to Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, Fundraising Academy at National University, Be Generous, your part-time controller, staffing boutique, and nonprofit thought leader, as well as nonprofit nerd. So we like to remind you, you know, we are really so grateful for our presenting sponsors. And thanks to YPTC, the week's not over. We've got tomorrow still. So make sure you turn in or tune in uh, tomorrow to join us for tomorrow's episode. Dan, thank you. It's been fantastic. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Yeah, well, I appreciate your time and your expertise in this, because again, it is not my wheelhouse or my zone of genius. So I always look for you and your part-time <laughs> for this information. So thank you so very much. 
Do join us back here tomorrow for another episode of The Nonprofit Show with your part-time controller. And until then, stay well so you can do well. Thanks again, Dan.